Hello friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Danny, and today we're going to go through some book recommendations for some books that are not new releases. Recently I have heard some rumblings on booktube of people feeling a little pressure to constantly pick up the newest and best book. And so I wanted to step back for a little bit and give you guys some recommendations on books that were not published within the last couple of years. I think that sometimes these books can often get forgotten about. And also I think that every once in a while it's nice to kind of look back at some books that I've read in the past and say, hey, I really did like those and get more people to read them because they're not in the limelight anymore and yet they're still very deserving of their readership. I think I would like to do this probably every other month, and I would like to give you guys a variety of genres in each video. I'm not promising that the genres will always be the same, or maybe I'll also do like a chonky edition or uh, some other things <laughs> where I have themes for each video. For this video, I'm gonna have five different genres for you guys. I have a fantasy, a sci-fi, a, a horror novel, a historical fiction, and even a romance. So. I have one for each of those genres that I'm going to give you, and I will also tell you the publication dates, what I rated it, and a brief synopsis for these books. All of these books are ones that I've enjoyed, and so I hope that if any of them find intriguing, or you find intriguing, that you will pick them up and enjoy them as well. The first genre that I'm going to highlight is fantasy. Are you surprised? <laughs> and the book that I'm going to highlight for you guys today is Neverwhere. So this is a book I read many, many years ago by Neil Gaiman, and this is the illustrated edition. It is beautiful, and I am dying to reread it because some of the illustrations in this are just fantastic. I don't know if that's going to come across on camera, but I, I've really enjoyed just like peeking through uh, some of the pictures and kind of remembering the story because it has been a minute since I've read this. If you haven't ever heard of Neverwhere, this follows a man who runs into a girl who's in trouble and he decides to help her. Her name is Dor and she is being hunted if I remember correctly. I can't remember why, which is <laughs> why I need to reread it, but she's being hunted and because of the fact that he makes the decision to help her, he ends up being drawn into a world that he didn't expect. And by a different world, I literally mean a different London. It's called London Below, and it is a world full of magical creatures and dark things and furious ways, many, many ways of getting lost and not being able to come home. And so, and all he really wants to do is get back to his normal life. And I just, I really enjoyed this story. I know that this is probably one of the more popular books on this list, but it is a book that I don't hear a lot of people talking about anymore. And so I wanted to kind of bring it back up and see if uh, any of you have never heard of it before and if you would be interested in reading it. Or maybe you have heard of it before and I'm just reminding you that it's on your TBR and you need to pick it up. But I rated this five stars. Uh, I have not reread it yet, but I do plan on rereading it. Hopefully at some point this year, if not this year, definitely next. Also, Neverwhere was published in 1996, just so you guys know. So on to the next genre. We are going to talk about horror next. And I will say that this one was probably the hardest for me to come up with a suggestion for books that were published prior to 2023, because horror is a genre that I have just recently gotten into and I do tend to pick up new releases in this genre instead of picking up the old classics. I have picked up a few of the classics but I didn't want to recommend them here because I feel like they are books that everyone knows about and I'm trying to highlight books that I don't hear a lot of people talking about and so anyway that led me to The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein. This book I think was my first retelling of Frankenstein and I'm pretty sure it was my first uh, retelling of Frankenstein, and you follow Elizabeth Frankenstein, who originally is in a really dire situation, and she ends up being taken in by the Frankensteins to be a companion to their son, who is a little eccentric, Victor Frankenstein. And so you actually get to follow a dual timeline in this book, where you follow her as a young child, where she is Victor's companion, and she is helping him fit into society isn't really the norm, isn't really the way that I would describe it, but she's trying to allow him a, not only a companion, but someone who can maybe help him conform a little bit to societal norms. 
And then you also have her as an adult, and she is looking for Victor Frankenstein because he has left the family home and left her there. And he is kind of what she believes is her only way of actually having a home because his family has paid for everything for her. And if she is not going to be his companion, they really have no need to keep her around. And so she goes on the search for Victor Frankenstein in her adult life. And you follow both. And it is definitely a dark descent into some of the things that Elizabeth has done throughout her life and some of the things that she has seen with Victor. And I freaking love this book. It was great to see it from her perspective, but it was also an amazing found family situation too that you kind of get throughout the book. I won't say more than that because I don't want to uh, spoil anything for you guys, but I really did enjoy this this retelling and it is what inspired me to eventually buy Frankenstein for myself. Not that I've read it yet, but I will <laughs> at some point in time, uh, but this is my horror recommendation. This one was published in 2018 and I rated this a four star. I can't remember if I rated this a four star or 4.5 because Goodreads doesn't track that, <laughs> but it was definitely a book that I highly enjoyed at the time, and it is one that I would consider rereading, re but probably not until after I've read the original inspiration for the book. The next genre that I want to talk to you guys about is sci-fi, and this book on Goodreads is shelved as middle grade sci-fi, but I did not think it was middle grade when I was reading it, so if any of you have read it and would like to let me know what your thoughts are on that, I would be interested, because I really don't think it's middle grade. But I'll put that out there just in case. And that is The Last Quintista. I've not heard a lot of people talk about this book except for when it was originally published. I heard a lot of people talking, ranting and raving about the cover, how beautiful it was, and that's kind of it. <laughs> and I'm really shocked because I really enjoyed it. It was definitely a story that I think maybe has been done uh, before, but I really enjoyed the character that we follow and I think maybe that's why they shelve it as middle grade because the main character is a young girl. I can't remember exactly how old she is but she is, my guess would be between 9 to 12 years old. I can't remember exactly but she's definitely young. And her and her family are on Earth. The very very beginning of the book you know that Earth is going to die and so there is a mass exodus of people who are trying to get off the planet. And clearly the only people who can do that are people who have the means to do that. And her family is privileged enough to get asked to go on one of the last shuttles off of the planet. And because of the fact that this has happened and there are still a lot of people on the planet who are trying to get off, there is some issue with the shuttle whenever her and her family get on there is a protest happening outside and while they are kind of getting settled the protesters start like they they essentially break through the barricades and run towards the ship and so they have to get off the ground very quickly otherwise they'll be taken over and potentially not be able to get away and you don't see what happens because Everybody who goes on this ship, they are traveling in such a way and too far enough away that they would not survive if they were not put in like a cryo, is it cryostasis, so that's what it's called, where they kind of freeze you. And that part, this is, happens at the very beginning of the book. You also get to talk about like how they learn things while they're in cryostasis. So they essentially have like learning curriculum that you can choose and like entertainment mean, means that you can choose to be like plugged in <laughs> whenever you're in cryostasis. And so they do this with this young girl and right after the protesters break the barricade, she is put in cryostasis and she has no idea what happens. Well, she eventually wakes up and finds everything to be different than how it was. There, she can't find her family that was on the ship with her and the people who are on the ship look different and act different than the people who she originally got on the ship with. And so she doesn't know how much time has passed and she kind of has to figure out where her family is, what happened, and she does this all by a little bit of espionage. <laughs> and I, I was so impressed with her character because it definitely is written from a younger person's perspective, but how she handles things is childlike, but it's also, it's, it also just shows her strength 
in a really bad situation and some of the things that she relies upon. There's a little bit of found family in this as well. And um, yeah, I just, I found it very intriguing. The, the futuristic components of some of the, the things that she runs across on the ship. There are some like terraforming space elements as well that you get to learn about, which I found fascinating, but it was, it was a really fun book. I did rate the Last Quintista 4.5 stars and I, this is published in 2021. My next genre for you guys is historical fiction, which is definitely one that I do not read a ton of. But last year, I think in January of last year, I picked up Five Little Indians by Michelle Good and absolutely loved this book. And I think more people need to read it. I was very uneducated about the residential schools that have been in Canada and what that meant for Indigenous peoples in Canada. And this story puts you in the perspective of five Indigenous children who get placed in residential schools and what happens to those children. And you follow their storyline throughout, from childhood through adulthood. And it is such a heart-wrenching story. Also found family. Are you seeing a theme? <laughs> Um, but it was also very educational with how certain things happened and what the families had to go through of these children who were taken, what happens to them after they do get to leave the schools and what situations they're put into as adults. And it was just, it was very eye-opening. And I think it was done in a way that is very blunt, but also, it also read like, I mean, it is a fiction, a fiction book, but it read like a, a story. It was not, even though it covers very hard things and very harsh topics, I think that it's, it was very easy to read isn't the right way, but it was, it was very interesting. It kept your attention and it, it allowed you to see from a different perspective. So I did, I really enjoyed this and I don't hear very many people talk about it. So I did rate this five stars. This was published in 2020. The last genre that I have for you guys is romance, which is definitely out of my comfort zone, but I have read a few that I quite loved. And one of those is The Dead Romantics. So this is a paranormal romance. Uh, so it is a genre blend, but I really enjoyed the grief components in this, which is going to sound really weird for a romance. But I think one of the things I have to have in a romance is I have to have more emotion connected to the storyline or I get bored and uh, the stories can sometimes irritate me. And so what this book follows, you follow your main character who is a writer and she has been writing romance novels, if I remember correctly. And she has since kind of fallen out of love with romance and she's having a really hard time meeting her deadlines and writing the stories that she knows she will love and, and her audience will love. And her very early on in the book, her dad passes away and her dad was kind of her person. Was, he was her person who kind of grounded her to the world. He was part of her identity and she has this moment of crisis where she doesn't really know what to do because her person has died. And her and her dad, which you also learned very early on, had a gift where they could actually speak to ghosts. And no one else in her family shares this trait. And so she feels very alone in this. She ends up going home for the funeral and you get to see her interactions with her family, why she left home. She was living very far away from home uh, at the very beginning of the story. You get to see her grow in this and have to deal with the grief of losing her father, but then also having a chance to reconnect with her family if that's what she chooses to do. And then there is a romance element within this. I know it doesn't sound like there is, uh, but there is a, a romance. And since it is paranormal romance, it is, um, well, that's all I'll say. It's paranormal romance. There's someone who comes in into her life at this point in time. And I will say one of the reasons I really did like this as a romance is the relationship is not what fixes her. It does help her make certain steps, but you see her growth outside of the relationship as well, which I really appreciated. I did rate this one five stars. It's one of the only romances I've rated a five star, but I really did uh, enjoy this and I, I am interested to read more by this author. This book was published in 2022, so just outside of the range uh, of years that I was giving you guys. 
So those are five book recommendations for you guys that were not published in 2023 or 2024. So hopefully they're a little bit easier for you guys to have access to. I hope with the variety of genres that you guys are able to find something that you're interested in. If you guys would like me to keep doing this, if this is an idea that interests you and you would like to see the, the videos like every other month on books that were not new releases, please let me know. And if you have recommendations for me of books that you think BookTube has forgotten about, please leave those in the comments as well. I would love to add to my list that maybe could be featured on future videos. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you have a lovely evening and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.